This is not how we want Extreme Rules to end. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Nash Show. Welcome back to the channel. And tonight, I'm going to give you guys the results of Extreme Rules. So we kicked the whole night off with the kickoff show, Finn Balor versus Shinsuke Nakamura for the for the Intercontinental title. Pretty good match. Um, lit it was it, the match was the exact same as it was this past Tuesday on SmackDown, but it had the but we we thought it would have the have a different result. No, it had the exact same end result when Shinsuke Nakamura pinned. Finn Balor with the Kinshasa to become Intercontinental Champion. This is actually his second championship in WWE in the main roster. So congrats to Nakamura. Obviously Finn Balor will bring out the Demon SummerSlam in the wake. I'm calling I'm calling it right now. Next up, we have Drew Gulag in his hometown of Philly defending the Cruiserweight title against Tony Nese in arguably one of the best matches, best cruiserweight matches I had ever seen in a long while. But but at the end, Drew Gulak defeated Tony Nees, hitting him with the Cyclone Crash, as he calls it, to retain the Cruiserweight Championship. Can anyone stop Drew Gulak? Who knows? Only time will tell. So that was just that, that was just the kickoff show. Now now for the main card. I did not think I did not think that this would ever work but shockingly enough it did. Even with Elias helping out Shane McMahon and Drew McIntyre, Undertaker still hit McMahon with a tombstone to get a pinfall victory under no holds barred as Undertaker teamed up with Roman and Shane teamed up with McIntyre. I was not expecting them to coexist, but I mean they had I mean they had a mutual respect for one of those, so I guess it kind of makes sense. And then we had the Smack and not the SmackDown, and then we had the Raw Tag Team titles defended as the Revival defended against the Usos and back and forth match. Um and probably one of the craziest endings of all time. All four men beating the holy hell out of each other. And at the closing moments, the Revival hit Jimmy Uso with a Shatter Machine to retain the Raw Tag Team titles. Now, of course, we all... Now, of course, ever since WrestleMania, we had not seen Aleister Black in action. You know, you know, sure, he may have been a part of like some house shows and whatnot, but never on TV. And so he's, he was... Begging someone to knock at his door to pick a fight with Alistair Black. Who was the person? None other than Cesaro. Of, of, of all people. Honestly, I was kind of hoping for Randy Orton. But Cesaro would have would and ended up having to suffice. But even though this match was pretty good... um. Honestly, again, again, this match, again, this match was good. Um, you know, both were going after the legs, you know, the head, pretty, pretty much all part parts of the body. Black Mass to to Cesaro picked up Alistair Black the victory. So next up, we have the SmackDown Women's Championship on the line as Bailey defended against Nikki against Nikki Cross. And Alexa Bliss. Two on one handicap rules. Even under handicap, even even under a handicap match, Bailey defeat actually defeated Nikki Cross with an elbow drop to retain the SmackDown women's title. Um pro, uh, just right literally right after um like bef like right after Bailey countered Twisted Bliss. So, congratulations to Bailey. I mean, Bailey as champ as SmackDown Women's Champion. I love it. I absolutely love it. Next up, we have a match that honestly I did not think was going to happen. We got Braun Strowman and Bobby Lashley, last man standing. 
I just want to say one thing. How the hell was Braun Strowman standing? How was he able to move? After what happened a couple of weeks ago on Raw. How? I ain't got no clue. But I, but I can tell you that Braun Strowman became the last man standing after he power slammed Bobby Lashley from the stands onto the floor. Which, I don't know how that was even possible. But it, but it became possible. Braun Strowman became the last man standing. So next up we have the, the SmackDown Tag Tiles on the line as Daniel Bryan and Rowan defended against the New Day and Heavy Machinery. I, mm, these, these three tag teams went at it. Like, they were beating the holy hell out of each other. Hold, 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 guys. There we go. All right, you got, no, so, uh, so, sorry about that. I just had to take care of something. But anyway, hold on. Let me charge. Charge my phone a little bit. There we go. Anyway, um, yeah, this match was absolutely brutal. Um, but the closing moments of, but the final moments of of the match, um. Daniel Bryan and Big E were the la were the two men were the two legal men in the ring. Daniel Bryan slapped Big E and that kind of backfired on him because he because Big E made the tag to Xavier Woods to hit the midnight hour on Daniel Bryan to become six time tag team champions. So sh so huge congrats to the new day they earned it. Next up we got the United States title on the line as Ricochet defended against the phenomenal AJ Styles with the rest of the club at ringside. We knew it, we knew it was going to happen. I, be, I believe I called it. I, I believe I made the prediction that AJ Styles was going to win and my prediction came true. AJ Styles defeated Ricochet with the Styles clash and with the help of Luke Gallows when the referee's back was turned to become a three-time United States champion. Odds are AJ Styles will probably drop the title within the next several weeks. Probably, probably at SummerSlam. Who knows? Next up, we got Ke we got Kevin Owens versus Dolph Ziggler, and I never would have thought that Kevin Owens would be a babyface. I never, I never would have guessed it because Kevin Owens was always a heel. Always, no matter how you looked at him, he was always a heel. And him as a babyface, I'm digging it. I am digging it 100%. But in mere seconds, Kevin Owens hits Dolph Ziggler with a stunner. Game over. Next up, we have Kofi Kingston versus Samoa Joe for the United States title. And Samoa Joe took out one finger only for Kofi to use the other. But in the end, even with the dominance of Samoa Joe, Kofi hits Joe. Kofi hits Joe with Trouble in Paradise to retain the WWE title. Thus, all three members of the New Day now have gold. And now Kofi Kingston no longer has to worry about the Money in the Bank briefcase because we now move on to the main event. <sighs> Becky Lynch, Seth Rollins, defending the Raw Women's and Universal titles against Baron Corbin and Lacey Evans. I feel bad. I feel so bad for Becky Lynch, but at the same time, I don't feel any. I feel nothing but pity for Baron Corbin. This was an absolute brawl. The term "Extreme Rules" they just took the name to a whole new to a whole new level, because the final moments of the match, Baron Corbin hits Becky Lynch with the end of days. And asks Seth Rollins, literally, like literally, Seth Rollins saw Corbin do that to, to his girlfriend, to his well, man of sorts, <laughs> um, you know, you know, to her, to, you know, to his woman, and he looks in, in his eyes, and, and Corbin looks in Rollins' eyes and says, "What are you gonna do, you piece of shit?" Oh, Kendall's second hand, bam. Just beat the holy shit out of Baron Corbin. Hits him with the steel chair. 
Lacey just backed off. He, she was like, I'm out. I'm out. Bye, Felicia. I am out. One stop. That didn't work out. Two stops. That didn't... No. Three stops. That pretty much gave, gave Seth Rollins the victory. Only now... Yeah. Brock Lesnar finally cashes it in. And we have a new Universal Champion in Brock Lesnar. So now we won't be seeing him for years. I, th this is the... Mm, uh, mm. I mean, I mean the pros and cons of of the situation. Kofi Kingston doesn't have to worry ab about the briefcase anymore. At the same time, Seth Rollins has to get the title back somehow, some way. He did it once before. He'll he'll do it again. I'm gonna make my call right now and say SummerSlam. Seth Rollins, Brock Lesnar. I say a ladder match. I'd say I I say make it a ladder match. Why not? I mean overall the I mean overall the night the the night was was really good. Per, the whole place was jam packed. The Wells Fargo Center was completely jam packed. Unlike stomping grounds, stomping grounds was not jam packed. This one was. I gotta give give this four stars. And with that being said, that's going to do it for the results video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, smash that thumbs up button. If you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and turn on the post notification bell so you guys don't miss out on any new content that comes your way. And, you guys, and of course, if you guys did not watch Extreme Rules Live, you can watch it on demand only on the WWE Network. And on that, this is your boy Nash signing out.